Hello, everybody, and welcome to Rich Ideas with Felicia. So I am going to take you today through the W-4 process, what you need to know about the W-4. I've been getting a lot of emails about two weeks ago in our Wealth Principles from the Bible on Clubhouse. Coach Rick introduced us to the W-4 process, also known as the W-4 sandwich. So we sent out the emails with the documents and um, people have been emailing and saying that they didn't quite understand it. So I created the video and plus I had, I had to do my own research on it for myself. So I want to go ahead and do a presentation so that I could learn the process and also be able to teach others about the process because it is a powerful tool that we can use to regain our credits and get our money back from our utilities, from our mortgages, and from everybody that has gone into our trust accounts and taken money from us. So I hope you all enjoy the video and we will get started. The SESTA KV Act of 1666. SESTA KV means he who lives and it is a legal term for an individual who is a beneficiary of a trust or an insurance poly policy with rights to property and the income and profits that the property provides. So they enacted the Sesta K View Act of 1666 after the Great Fire of London. The king took over um, private citizens' property and made the private citizens the beneficiary. They took over control of the property. So they became the donor, the, the church um, was became the donor, the king. Uh, became the trustee and the poor, sick, and indigenous people became the beneficiaries. That's how this Sesta uh, V Act was initiated. I posted a link for you to go and read the whole act and read um, about everything that happened in that whole series of time. And uh, the Sesta K Trust um, for us in the United States, this is um, known as our straw man. This is how our straw man is created and they create a trust for us. So your birth certificate, when you are born, your parents register you through your birth certificate and then you're recorded in the registry at the capital of your state. The state creates a corps, a corporation in your name in all caps. Um, that all cap name is a corporation that they create. The corporation is funded by the SESTA uh, K V Act of 1666. Your birth certificate creates your straw man. Go and read Meet Your Straw Man and Whatever You Want to Know by David Robinson. Uh, my mama is reading that book right now, so I don't have it in front of me. Um, go and read that book. It tells you um, what your straw man is how your straw man is created and why they create a straw man because they want to make sure that they continue to get rich off of you. So that's why they create that straw man and create that trust. Funded by the SESTA KV Act of 1666, your trust is created through your birth certificate and you get 1.5 million from both parents and then over the next two years, about $300,000 is added into your account. Anytime you apply for credit, anytime you get loans, that money is added into your trust account. So by the time you reach adulthood, your account is has millions and millions of dollars in it, if not billions of dollars. Anytime a parent registers their child, school, daycare, they they give access to those corporations um, to use that trust fund on your behalf. Because you are the beneficiary of the trust that they create, you can't, you cannot access it. We 
cannot access it um, because we're the beneficiaries. So we have to go directly through the different companies that access the trust. So any company that uses your social security number, um, they're allowed to access your trust on your behalf. It seems, you know, just off and strange, but that's how it that's how it goes. Every bill you get, your driver's license, um, your social security card, all of those things are under your straw man, and you you know that because um, when they send you a bill. Your driver's license, your social security card, it's all caps. And that's, they create your straw man um, off of your birth certificate. Your birth certificate is all caps. So your straw man is, um, um, is the trust is created from your straw man. And um, whenever they go to use your social security number, uh, they can access that trust on your account to collect the money up front and then you still pay the money to them. So they're getting the money twice. When you get a court summons, they're summoning your straw man. Your straw man is considered a dead entity. Um, that's why it's in all caps. Um, you have um, all caps on tombstones. So you um they're summoning the dead man, they're summoning the person. So when you go to court and you um, you have to have a representative too, right? Um, because a dead person can't, rep um, can't represent themselves. So that's why you have to have a representative. So when you go to court and you answer, yes, that's me, then you are saying that you're that straw man. So one of the legal things they say to, to say if when you call it when your name is called or when that straw man's name is called then you say i am the authorized representative for the represented person like you don't claim that you're that person you just say you're the authorized representative and when you sign your autograph you also put that you're the authorized representative of the represented person so it's saying that you're the beneficiary of that straw man remember you have to remember that all courts are banks so all they want is money <clears throat> judges are bankers excuse me y'all sorry attorneys are banking agents your case is a collection um a tax is placed on every court case if you pay the taxes on that case it goes away you don't have to worry about it um, you the straw man or the security. So you the one that's going to pay them. And as long as they get paid, they stay off, they stay off your back. They don't care. They just want the money. This is my disclaimer, everybody. This, uh, video presentation is for education, entertainment, entertainment purposes only. I'm only here to facilitate the knowledge however it is your duty um, to go look this information up for yourself so that you can know it and apply it to uh, your own life second timothy 2 15 study to show thyself approved unto god a workman that needeth not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth so when you study and you gain knowledge knowledge is power and this information that we're learning is powerful proverbs 3 13 and 14 says happy is the man that findeth wisdom and the man that getteth understanding for the merchandise of it is better than mer than the merchandise of silver and the gain thereof than fine gold so get this information, study it for yourself so you can understand the whole process of why we are reclaiming our credits. We're reclaiming our money that they have stole, stolen from us for hundreds of years, guys. And this is the reason why we're doing this. So the W-4 process, let's get this money. Come on, y'all. It's also known as the W-4 sandwich um included you're going to include a w, w, uh, cover letter w4 this 1040 is in the old lingo but i put it in here i don't know if um, some people are going to use it and then the 1040 v 
So the first thing is the W-4. Okay, so the first statement that we are going to look at in the W-4 sandwich is the W-4 statement. And this is the employee's withholding certificate. And this is what we're going to use to get our money back from the corporations that um, get our social security number and um, access our trust through our social, social security number. So that first section, that first section is your name, your straw man's name. So over here, your first name and your middle name because it says first name and middle initial, but you want to put your full middle name if that's how it is on your social social security card. So however it is written on your social card, make sure that's how you write it in the first box. Use all caps. Um, so you're going to have your first name, your middle name, and then your last name in the last name box. And then over to the right of the paper is your social. Don't forget to, don't leave that off. Make sure you put your social. Then put your street address and your city and your state. In the lingo, it says to spell your state out and your zip code. And then make sure you mark how you file, whether you file single, married, um, or head of household. The next thing that you're going to fill out on this form, you're going to go all the way down to 4C. And I'm trying to make sure you can see it right here, 4C. Now, in the older lingo that I um, saw, they said to leave that blank. Um, in the updated, um terms and aspects of it they they said that you can leave it blank but you may be missing out on all of the credits that um you you can obtain if you put a number there so say for instance i'm i'm going to be doing bank of america and i've had a bank of america credit card in the past um my second mortgage um, that I had in the past was Bank of America before they sold it. And um, I also have a Bank of America checking account. So all of that is one W-4 sandwich. Um, you're not going to do one for each Bank of America account that you have. You do them all together. So that number is going to be a really high number. If you've, been, if you've done business with the companies for a lot of years don't be afraid that that number is high because you're going to add up everything that is on that bank bank statement you add up everything on that bank statement including the debits including the the negative the minuses so everything is added up and all those are all your credits um and like i said it may be a really high number and what I'm going to do is put um, just so like for this one, for instance, this is the Bank of America one. And, th and if you see how thick that is, that's only a year of bank statements, guys. So I'm only going to put a year of bank statements, but I am going to have more numbers. And there's a lot of numbers on here too but i'm going to go through and add those numbers up even the negative ones and then formulate a number and i'm going to give a good faith estimate of how much they owe me how many credits that um, i have attained over the years so do your best estimate of that and put a number in there if you so choose or if you want to leave it blank you can leave it blank um there's lingo on both so I'm not going to tell you which one to choose, um, but I am going to myself put a number there. 
and make sure that you write exempt under that box under that box it's hard to see with this mirror um right here under that box that i have pinked out write exempt under there all caps make sure you put that so that you won't get taxed on that money and then you're going to sign your autograph you don't want to use a a, a, a dead uh dead man's signature sign your autograph and there's the example there you put by colon then you put your first name dash middle name colon last name and then i put a dot and a comma and then you put authorized representative for the represented person and then you put a comma done in good faith and um i also have all rights reserved um some uh, it's on some people's lingo and it's not on some people's um so you can choose to put that or not but make sure that you use your autograph and not your signature make sure you put the date because you want to you want to let them know that this is dated i know when i sent it to you is dated and i want you to work on it if you don't put a date then they may choose not to work on it because you don't have a date there so when you get down to the employer you want to put um, the employer's name and address and this will something um it may be a guesstimate or s um guess you may have to guess on the first date of employment like i know when i moved into my house on my coast electric i know that was october of 2004 i don't know the exact date so i just put october 2004 um so just kind of you know try to remember or guess um and then the employer id or tim i put um um the website here um, the sec.gov you can go to that website and um, in the search box you can type in and see if those companies come up a lot of the major ones are there like I know I got Bank of America's EIN number off of there and it can get a little confusing um, some of the forms don't have it but you will find that some of those forms have that company's EIN so that is a tool that you can use to uh, obtain those EINs or you can call them and ask them to email it to you. I know I got my electric company, my water company. They all email me my EIN. If they refuse to give it to you, some people will try to give you a hard time. I know Navy Federal was trying to give me a hard time. Um, about obtaining their EIN and I explained to them that it was for my taxes and then she was saying that they can't give it to me unless I had I had built up ten dollars interest um, in my account and I was like well write it up because I have way more than ten dollars of interest in my account so you know um, but anyway she said it was gonna take two to three days so I'll be making sure that I audit them in my next <laughs> Um, in my next um, uh, group of uh, W-4s I send off when they send them because I'm going to get mine shipped out today. But anyway, just call them and ask them. If they refuse, then you can write refused in that box because if they don't want to give it to you and you can't obtain it, um, and then they obviously you know, are guilty of something. So just write refused and um i've seen in some of the lingo that you get an affidavit um saying that you reached out to the company for their ein and they refused to give it to you get it notarized and send it along with your remittance and they said that um it throws up a red flag and so they'll audit those first so um it's fairly simple to obtain those eins but you want to have something in that box as well and that is pretty much it for the W-4.
So this next form is the 1040 reporting form. In the new lingo, it is not included. This is a form if you want them, if you want to have the monies uh, that you get back from your W-4s from the audit, if you want to have that transferred into a checking or savings account, you would fill out this form. And on the first page, you would, of course, fill out the top with your first name, middle name, last name, your social um, street address, uh, city, your state, and your zip code. And then on the second page, you are going to put in your account information and you're going to check whether you want a checking or savings. Now, this part is cut off a little bit, but on that form, on that 1040, let me show it to you here. It's 35A. If you go down to 35A, that um, you're going to fill in that box with what you put in 4C on your W-4. So if it's a million dollars on your 4C, then you want to make sure it says a million dollars on that 30 on that line 35A. Okay. And that's if you want your money um, direct deposited into a checking or savings account. And that is your 1040 reporting form. Okay, guys, the next form is the 1040V payment voucher. This is how the IRS gets their 13%. You fill this voucher out. It's very simple. You just put in your social, your first name, middle name, and your last name, your street address, your city, your state, and your zip code, and then you tear it off along that prefer perforated line. Make sure you tear it off, and then you're going to want to paper clip it to the top of your sandwich, your W-4 sandwich. So it's going to go on the top and that's their voucher, um, which allows them to get paid on the older lingo. There is um, some language where you sign the back with your social going across and then that 10 digit or that 10 um, number on the back of your social security card that's in red, it starts with a letter. And then you put a two cent stamp and then you sign your signature across the two cent stamp. In the newer lingo, you do not have to sign the voucher. So um, you can choose which way you do it. I am going to post a video where it shows how to do the back of it. I did not do the back of uh, the voucher because I'm not going to sign the back of mine. But if you, if you want to go that way, the video on how you sign the back of the voucher is going to be, and I'll actually put it in this um, link to, or on this slide so that you can go and watch it and see how to sign it if you choose to sign the back of the voucher. But in the new lingo, you do not have to sign the back of the voucher. Do not fill in any dollar amount. Um, do not fill that out. This voucher pays the IRS for the audit assessment that they are doing. And that is it for the 1040V payment voucher. So the next thing you want is your cover letter, and that's going to go on the front. And then your voucher is on the front. So it's going to be in front of your 1040, your cover letter. And the lingo says to use your own terminology don't send in a blanket statement that everybody else is sending in. Put it into your own words. Um, the older lingo um, says to write it out, like write it in your penmanship. and Or you can type it. Um, and then I, what I did was I typed the body of it and then I put my autograph in my handwriting. So I put a sample letter um, what you want to say. Don't copy this. Just kind of use it as a guide and put your own terminology, put your own wording in there. Make sure you date it at the top. 
you can mark it urgent they even say you can put it like in big red um you can put urgent and big red block letters and um so you know maybe if they see it as urgent they'll work on it um first please um audit this account immediately recoup our remittances and any funds owed to me and then you can just be honest with them i've never filled out this form before i'm on i may be unsure if i'm incorrect contact me or you can correct it yourself i didn't put contact me in my letter i just put you know if i made a mistake or if i did something wrong please correct it and then you know submit run me my money <laughs> send, send me my money and then um you're gonna put sincerely and then make sure you use your autograph do not sign you want to autograph everything um on these forms and then that's <clears throat> that sample uh again by colon first name dash last um um, middle initial, I mean, middle name, sorry, <laughs> I'm blundering all over the place. So by colon, first name, dash, middle name, colon, last name, I put the dot in the comma, authorized representative for the represented person, comma, done in good faith, and then I put the all rights reserved. I write really small, so on my papers, you know, everything fits on one line. Um, but anyway, that's how you're going to use your autograph to um, submit this cover letter. And that's your cover letter. So now that you have all of your documents, you have your, ten, your W-4, you have your, if you're going to use your uh, 1040, and you have your 1040V, the payment voucher, and you also have your cover letter and any supporting documents. If you put a number in that box and you want to have supporting documents to go along with it, all of that is one sandwich. And um, so you put all of that together and then you can, you can ship it or you can send it priority you can send it express however you feel comfortable whatever you can afford however to send it it's not saying if you send it like you know emergent overnight that they're going to work on it but if that's how you want to send it and you want them to get it as fast as they can you can send it that way so send it however you want to send it um you want to fill out and make sure that um you get um, tracking on it so you know that they did receive it and the address is there Department of Treasury remittance office room 3413 1500 Pennsylvania Avenue comma NW I think that's Northwest Washington DC 20220 so submit it and make sure that address is correct you can send it, like I said, you can send it overnight, priority, however you want to. But just make sure you track it so you know when it got there. And so they're saying that it's taking up to 90 days to get your credits or your refunds. So give it some time. If you do your, your forms right, um, and there are, you know, people, I have not, for myself, I have not gotten anything because I haven't even sent anything off. I'm sending mine off today. That's why I'm um, doing this video because I wanted to learn the lingo and I wanted to make sure I knew everything for myself and make sure I'm doing the forms right and everything. Um, but there are people that have gotten credits as well as uh, money back. So be patient. Check for any correspondences from the IRS. They may ask you know, to send some documents, you know, don't be afraid of the IRS guys. They're business just like us. Um, all, they, all they want is money, you know, so don't be afraid of the IRS. They're nothing to fear. When, when you know the law and when you know that the law protects you and the IRS, and now you're hiring them with this process, you're actually hiring them because they get paid 13% to do this for you. So they're happy to do it that, you know, if you t turn in the documents and you do it the right way, they're going to get you your credits and your uh, refunds. The corporations are the ones that's ooh, scared. Um, so don't be afraid of the IRS. Um, if they do write you and say, hey, we need these documents, you know, 
either if you have them send them if you can get them from the company send them if not you just say the company refused or whatever whatever the case may be um to get your uh get your dividends get your ends do what you got to do and that is how you mail your w4 sandwich so who can you um who can you go and audit? Who can you have audited? Whoever you've given your social to, guys, whoever, Verizon, um, I'm coming for you, Bank of America, um, Carrington Mortgage Service, I cannot wait because I know that you have taken a lot of my credits that belong to me. You've screwed me over the years. I cannot wait to get my credits back from you. So any corporation or company or person who has obtained your social security number or has treated you like an employee, this that's what that W-4 form is for. Um, employees withholding. So you can claim, you can, you can have them audited. Every company listed on your credit report, paid, unpaid, or charged off, put those uh pull those credit reports people i put in for lexus lexus nexus consumer report that has absolutely everybody that has ever had your social um it takes seven to ten business days to get to you but you can start on the um ones you have you know that are readily available any ones that you have the ein number um start with those and then you know continue to send those documents in um i'm gonna do five at a time i may do 10 at a time it just depends on like the research that i do and the math and all of that stuff because a lot this is a lot of math so i'm gonna have to go through on each document i'm adding i'm adding i'm adding that's all you do is add 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 don't worry if it says it says negative add 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 those are all your credits so claim them guys I hope you enjoyed this video uh, if you want to learn about tax law tax credits if you want to operate out of unincorporated irrevocable tax credit producing trust you guys need to join the my financial IQ challenge I have posted my affiliate link there guys Go and click on it. This is how I am learning about all of this stuff, guys. It's liberating. It's freeing. Um, and I can't speak enough about it, You, but you have to get it for yourself. So join the challenge. Our next challenge starts January the 2nd through January the 6th. And I want to see you there, guys. So come on. Um, get this challenge. I've given you the W-4 process. Go get that money so that you can um, put that in your trust. <laughs> So you can expense out of your trust and get four times back the money. So if you want to make the real money, you need to get one of these trusts. So come to the Mind Financial IQ Challenge, guys, and I will see you in the challenge. And I will also see you in the next video. Bye. Okay, guys, one last time in case you didn't hear me, the last slide. <laughs> Join the My Financial IQ Challenge. Our next challenge is coming up. January the 2nd through January the 6th. This is where you're going to make the real money in this challenge because we teach you about tax law, tax credits. We teach you how to operate out of common law trusts and just um, so many other things that you will learn. You will move without being anxious. And you will operate, um, out, you know, not out of fear. So I encourage you all to join the challenge. And I posted my financial um, IQ challenge link here. Again, you click on it. Go and see the testimonials. See what the program is all about. Sign up, guys. And I will see you at the next challenge. And you can use all of this good money that you're getting back from these w4 processes to fund your brand new ministry trust 508 baby peace thank you guys for watching i appreciate it